Hi everyone, so in today's video we're going to be talking about immunity in the immune system. Now there's loads of things out there in the media and the news at the moment and they're referencing things like antibodies, antigens, immunity, herd immunity and vaccines. So what we're going to talk about today is actually what the immune system is and how it works. So firstly, I like to think of the immune system as the body's own natural military defence system. Now if we just look at our own cells in the body, every single one of our cells has a unique fingerprint, a bit like a uniform. And that's how this defence system recognises all our cells and our tissues as our own, and therefore it will not attack them. So when a foreign substance, something like a bacteria, a virus, a toxin, enters the body, it's wearing its own uniform or fingerprint. And this fingerprint is also called an antigen. And it's that antigen that allows the body to recognise it as not one of its own. And therefore it will mount an immune reaction. Now, as I said before, the immune system is a bit like the body's military defence. And like any defence system, it needs soldiers. Well, within our blood, we have white blood cells. And the white blood cells are like the soldiers. And like soldiers, we have different types, which are better at some things than others. They have their own specialties. So within white blood cells, we have different types. There are many types, but there are four main ones I'm going to talk about today. And these are macrophages, antigen-presenting cells, T-lymphocytes, and B-lymphocytes. So when a foreign substance enters our body, like bacteria or toxin, wearing its own uniform or blueprint, which we call the antigen, the first line of defence are the macrophages, because they are the sign signalling cells. The macrophages come across the antigen, and because they don't recognise it as the bodies, they engulf it immediately. And their first action is to take that antigen to the antigen presenting cells. So they're referring it up the ranks. And they say to the antigen presenting cells, because these cells communicate, they say, I found this antigen, what do we do with it? It's foreign. The antigen presenting cells then take the antigen and report even higher up the ranks. They go to the T lymphocytes. So the T cells are pretty senior in the ranks and they're going to make an executive decision as to whether a full immune response is required or they disregard it. If they're going to mount a full immune response, the T cells split into two groups. One of them is the T killer cells and the other is the T helper cells. The T killer cells, as the name suggests, will directly kill that bacteria or that virus or the foreign substance. Whereas the T helper cells, they become runners. They're gonna help coordinate the attack and they're gonna communicate with the last set of cells, the B cells or the B lymphocytes, which will bring in backup. So when these T helper cells have recruited these B cells, the B cells then will split into two main categories. One of the main groups is going to start to make antibodies, which is a bit like an antidote, which helps kill the bacteria or the virus. The other group, their job is to become memory cells. And those memory cells, as the name suggested, they remember that specific fingerprint or antigen. So that if in the future, that same antigen from the same disease enters the body, we will have a quicker, faster immune response and therefore maybe less severe symptoms and a quicker recovery time. While this immune response that's going on that I've just told you about is taking place within the body, it causes the body to be in a state of inflammation. And that inflammation causes the symptoms that we experience, and that might be pain, it might be a high temperature or fever, it might be swelling. So it's not surprising that while we're having the disease, we can't function as normal. Could you imagine every time our body came into contact with that bacteria or virus or antigen, we would have the same symptoms of the same severity over and over again. That's why it's so important that these B memory cells are there and that they do their job in remembering that antigen. 
And this leads me onto my final point about vaccines, because this is how vaccines work. With a vaccine, we're deliberately giving a patient a small amount of the virus or bacteria or antigen or a, or a damaged or weakened version, which causes an immune reaction, but it doesn't allow the patient to get the full-blown symptoms of the disease. But because we're mounting the immune reaction, it allows those B cells to make memory cells. And this will remember the antigen and give us that learned immunity to it. I hope you found that helpful. I hope I've made it nice and easy. Take care, stay safe.